All right, everybody. Thank you for all tuning in. And, of course, you know we always bring the exclusive interviews here to Biz With Me. You guys don't already know. My name is David Dwayne. And we have Angela, Big Ange from Mob Wives, New York, on the line with us right now. How you doing, Ange? Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for this interview. We do appreciate you coming on the show. No problem. Happy New Year. Every yes, time. Happy New Year. And let me tell you something. We absolutely love your character, like just your personality on this show. Can you kind of just tell us how you got casted for the show? Because originally you weren't supposed to be on the show, but kind of tell us how that came about for you. Yeah, well, and um, what happened was I own a bar in Staten Island, and Jennifer, the producer, came in and asked me if I would like to try six episodes. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. And from six episodes, wind up 17 episodes, wind up to my own show, my own spinoff, and here I am now. Right. And your show is great in itself. Can we um, expect, like, a second um, season of your show? Because I'm totally all for it, and so are the listeners. I'm all for it, too, and I hope so. So far, it's looking that it may be possible. They didn't want to give me the definite yet. Right. It's okay. supposed to know by the end of this month. Ed. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm going to definitely keep my fingers crossed and save a prayer because you and yourself just are... I, I just love your personality, especially on television. It's just what I feel that television has been missing. And you're so uh, real. Thank you. Thank you. Not a problem. I think I think we're gonna have season two, but I don't know for sure. But I I got my fingers crossed, and I think it's a good possibility. And so, just in case, real quick for the listeners who don't know you, who you are, tell them who you are. The um the niece of. I'm I'm Big Ange from the Mob Wives. Every Sunday, ten o'clock on BH1. Okay. And I know during this season... The Drunken Monkey. Right, the Drunken Monkey. Can we kind of talk about the Drunken Monkey and how that whole... Um, that came about? Because I cause I had I was just overlooking it on television. It was like Drunken Monkey, Drunken Monkey. And I didn't realize that you're the co-owner of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the owners, me and my cousin. We have it for six years. It'll be six years coming up. Wow. And what just inspired you guys to just um start, you know, start the restaurant? Well, it was a restaurant. We actually took out the kitchen because, mm -hmm. because the place is so over. They just want to be drunks. <laughs> and I like just drunks. We're good with that. Much easier to just serve liquor than freaking make food. Right. And how is like just blew up, blew up, blew up. I'm sorry, say that again. The bar is very, very crowded. Ever since the show, it really took off. It became a trap. Was it? Was it like? Was there a lot of hype with the Drunken Monkey before the show, or was it kind of just kind of like it steady business? It was. It was just like holding its own, and now it's blown up. Wow. That's amazing. To just have something like that, have the show really help boost, you know, your career, like your main priority outside of the show. I mean, that's like so amazing that shows like this can do, you know, great justice for our people. The show. The show is funny. How do you like the way it's starting off? I get it, honestly. I think I really would like to see uh, Renee and Karen, like, kind of, you know, settle things out. But um, who knows? Not Renee, not Renee and Carla. Renee and Carla. My bad. Renee and Carla. Boop, boop. Renee and Carla. Yeah, I would <laughs> like to, too. I would like to, too. Because it's nonsense. Hopefully that could happen one day. Yeah. And, I mean, you definitely had a strong opinion on it, especially when um, Renee said, the go-to girl. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that kind of talk. We're talking about 46-year-old women here. 
Why? Eighteen-year-old girls that kind of talk. I don't like it. Right, I and definitely agree with that. I was kind of like, go to girl. I, I was, every time, like, I hear, I just crack up because I'm like, wow. It's not the fact that it, the, you know, the age of using it was just like, just that she used that term. I mean, she was keeping it real, though. She was keeping it thoroughly real on how she felt. So I know, I know. The, they're saying terrible things to each other. I don't like Yeah. That. And it's not a good way to um wash things, so... Maybe better words are good. No. So I know no, that you want to... That's their problem. They got to straighten it out amongst themselves. Exactly. And you and uh, Drita definitely helped the best way that you guys could. And you guys are great friends to the, you know, to the both of them. So let's talk about the plans that you have for 2013, because I know that you're going to be on Broadway. And I am uh, like... I am going to be on the play... My big gay Italian wedding, March 9th, we're going to have fun. We also have Big Angel's Angel, if anybody wants to donate, you can find me on the Facebook, the Twitter, whatever, for my fundraiser for the Hurricane Sandy. Right. And speaking of Hurricane Sandy, I know that you had just opened your salon. It was only nine weeks that it was open. How bad did that affect the salon and just um, your family and the people that you knew around you? Oh, no. The fam- everybody was fine except for the salon. We're actually going to open it in another week. Okay. That's Big Angie's secret. I'm actually in the city right now trying to find a parking spot to go buy some stuff for it. Nice. Now, now do, you do, do you do hair yourself? No, it's not that kind. It's it's like um, it's makeup, it's threading, it's hair extensions, it's eyelash extensions, it's clothes, it's your nails. It's like oh. everything. So it's like it's a boutique top shop. <laughs> nice. Everything I love to do in one place. I know that's right because you definitely like your fashion. Like, style is really something that's nice. Then you always have, like, if it's not the curly wig, you got the wig with the with the purple or, or the red going on. I'm like, Ange is really doing it up. Seriously. I do like that wig. <laughs> I like it because you don't, it's like every time you come on, you don't, see, you're not seeing a consistent thing. And it's always good when you're coming on television, your hair is different, your, look, your pants is a little different because you're showing that you can be very versatile. Yeah, I like changing it up. I can't stand looking the same all the time. Right. I know the exact same way because I have like a mohawk. I'm re- oh, like, it's, yeah. it's like orange. It's like it was red. It's like an orange right now, but I'm about to do like a do green. And just go Where green. Are you from? I like green, and I like the blue. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Delaware. Oh, Delaware. Okay. Yeah, and I de- did my hair blue before. That was an adventure. Well, since Daddy's been coming up, do it green. Right. Do you have any, like, plans for St. Patrick's Day? Speaking of which, funky. It's crazy on St. Patrick's Day. We Is it? At, we open at 9 in the morning, and we drink Irish coffee, soda bread, corned beef and cabbage. Ooh. And we get whack, whack, whack. You'll make me come to the Drunken Monkey, because I seriously do. Because it seems like it's I a lot of fun. We should be at the Drunken Monkey on St. Patty's Day. And it happens to be the day of the parade this year. So right in front of my bar is the parade also. Yeah. Nice. And some green beer. That's exciting. That is so exciting. So, and I'm not going to keep you for too long. So what other things do you have in the works besides, you know, popular we have just just season? We have the bigger is better, my book. Do not forget about my book. Just get it by the notebook. Oh, you, is it out right now or is it coming out? Oh, it's out. Bigger is better. It's my book about me and my crazy friends. Nice. I can't, I'm actually, I didn't even know that you had a book, but can you kind of tell us, the listeners, who didn't know? Yeah, you don't know I have a book. 
I didn't know. Can you kind of tell us about that book real quick? Yes, The Bigger is Better. It's in Barnes & Noble. It's all about me, my life. And it's, it's really funny. You have to get it. Definitely. I'm going to have to, and then I'm going to have to have you come why back. Don't you, why don't you get me an appearance in freaking Delaware? Ooh, that would be hot. Or Philly. And, and I'll come in yeah, and I'll bring you a book. All right, we can definitely do something. We're actually, you know what? We're actually going to be doing like a party in New York in a couple of months. So we would definitely like for you to um, come out. Let me, let me know. I definitely will. So, Ange, thank you so much for this interview. I do appreciate it. Any final remarks to um for us? My final remarks was, it was great talking to Delaware. I can't wait to see you in your green mohawk. And don't forget the drunken monkey. I'm always there. Big, big Angie's Angels for this Hurricane Sandy fundraiser. Anybody who wants to donate, they just go on my website. Uh, the Big Is Better book. The Big Angie's Secret Salon. And stay tuned to see what happens in season two of the Big Angie show. Thank you so much, Ann. All right. Thank you. Not a problem. You have a good one. Right. Don't forget about my appearance. I, I won't. We, we can talk.